Okay, sorry. So it's very surprising to see, you know, we have still how many people here. Waiting for the Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, my name is Eric, and uh, this project is a collaborative project between uh, University of Wyoming and uh, NCAR. And uh, so we also greatly uh, appreciate uh, Gavin Arnold is here uh, for our help, for, for his help, you know, to run our code on uh, Blue Waters. Okay, so uh, in our project, so um, our major work is try to optimize uh, linear solver code uh, in seismic processing. Uh, the algorithm called LSQR uh, is a very widely used crowd of space uh, linear solver. Um, so uh, this solver widely used in many areas, okay, but mainly for seismic processing, and it's very high, highly efficient and uh, capable of solving different type of linear system for large linear inversion problem. So uh, in this algorithm, the LSQR, and mainly uh, it has an iteration in the middle, and uh, so it's involved uh, two major computation, one is for the matrix multiply vector plus in the vector y, and the other one is uh, uh, transpose transpose of the matrix multiply vector. So in the real world application, uh, it's very <coughs> memory intensive, <coughs> compute intensive, and communication intensive problem. So in memory intensive, because you know, uh, in our application, uh, we try to solve very large matrix, and the matrix could be very huge and very sparse. Um, the data set could be much larger than about in the data set depending on the geo geological region of the interest to calculate, you know, it's easily to have, you know. So in our experiments, it's contain a you know, hundred gigabytes data set. Okay. So uh, it's contain uh, thousands or even more iterations. That's very computation intensive. And uh, it's also communication intensive because uh, like uh, other linear solver, for every iteration, we need to uh, do the global communication, uh, like the all radios. Uh, so, it's hard problem. And uh, so, our approach uh, mainly, you know, is a domain specific approach, just uh, for the seismic uh, data set. Uh, in those data sets, you know, there are some features uh, I will show you in a short while. And our approach um, is a little more general for such kind of matrix, okay? Because in that domain, all matrix has such kind of feature because, you know, I can show you first. Um, yeah, so in the scientific processing and for the sparse matrix, you already contain two parts. On the top, it's called the kernel and uh, the second part is called the damping and the smoothing. So for the kernel part, um, Okay, in the total matrix, the kernel part contain less than 1% rows and uh, more than 90% of non zeros. Okay, even the kernel part is sparse, okay, but it's relatively dense compared to the damping. In the second part for the damping and smoothing, it's very, very sparse, and it contain uh, more than 99% rows and less than 10% of the non zeros. Okay, so that is the future for the seismic uh, areas. Okay. So our optimization is uh, focused on such kind of matrix. Uh, we propose a partition strategy that is based on the special structure of the matrix. Uh, specifically, uh, our approach contains no in the data composition strategy and try to treat a different component of the matrix separately. So the general idea is, okay, we try to Okay, I can see that. But the general idea is, you know, we because just now I mentioned, you know, here we have the two part for the matrix, the kernel and the damping. And then for the kernel, we do some different partition with the damping partition. Okay, that's the major idea for this. So in this way, um, we will have a better uh, communication. So the whole approach will be much more scalable than before because uh, 
uh, we avoid uh, some global communication and uh, so some communication just local certainly we still have for every iteration we still have one all radios but you know this all radios is smaller than before and a uh, lot of communication are just local communication for every node it's just do the communication with its near neighbors okay not only the left and the right but also you know maybe a few neighbors near around so most of communication will be just local that's a major reason why our approach is more scalable than before okay so uh, that's a major step in the SP uh, so our algorithm we call the scalable parallel as LSQR algorithm so SP LSQR so uh, in in approach and initially first step we reorder the damping component to minimize the bandwidth. Uh, the second step, we do the decomposition as a partition, and we partition the kernel across column, partition the damping cross row. Okay, the two different partition approach, and the partition the damping transpose across column. So here in our approach for the damping part, the damping part is very sparse. Okay, kernel part although sparse, but relatively dense. So we keep two copies of the damping. Uh, one is for the original damping, the other one is damping transpose. Okay, but for the kernel, there is only one copy. So we do not say. Uh, so here we just uh, a little set uh, sacrifice the memory. Okay, so a little more redundant the data, but however the uh, performance could be improved uh, a lot. Okay, so we sacri sacrifice the memory a little bit. So in the third step, you know that's an iterative step, and we do the matrix multiply a vector. Okay. So multiply uh, the kernel with vector and then do communication with neighbors and then multiply the damping with uh, vector step two similarly, but this way we do uh, the kernel transpose and the damping transpose and multiply the vector. Okay, that's the iterative steps, okay, similar to all linear solvers. Okay. So here for the damping uh, matrix, and uh, that is the A is original damping. In the original damping, as I just mentioned, is very sparse. Okay, and the blue part, okay, the blue dot is just uh, the non-zero element. The matrix usually just like this way. You know, we have lots of like the not pure diagonal, but lots of line in this way. And our idea is we try to reorder the non-zero element, okay, into here, mainly you know into the C or the D. So after we reorder the non-zero element to the diagonal, and then when we do the communication here like this, you know, we can do the partition, and then when we do the communication, the communication mainly local. Okay. But for this part, for the original one, we can not avoid the global communication. So that's a major uh, uh, improvement in our approach. Okay. So it's called a matrix reorder. And for the data decomposition, and uh, as I just mentioned, and here we have the matrix, original matrix A, and we divide the kernel by column, and for the, that's a damping part, and we divide by row, and that's a uh, matrix A transpose, okay, so just a transpose of that. For the red part, and so it will be on the same computer node, and if the, they have the same color, they are on the same computer node. So, um, yeah, and then that's mentioned that you know, we store a single copy of the kernel uh, in the CSC format and store two copies of the damping component, uh, one copy in a CSR format and uh, the other one is a CSC uh, format. By the way, uh, for the sparse matrix, the CSC and CSR are very you know, popular um, format to preserve the sparse matrix. Yeah, so. Uh, that is uh, one major of the uh, computation, the matrix multiply vector. Uh, in this commu uh, computation, you know, if we, uh, so here, that's a vector and that's matrix. Okay, you also, um, well, even for the vector and uh, the red part will, you know, multiply by the red part and uh, that's a result. Okay. And in uh, this part, we still need a reduction. Okay, and uh, that's a final vector y because this vector y is uh, on every, every node and 
So that is the result, partial of the vector y. And finally, if we get the final result, then we still need a all reduce. Okay. So this step we cannot avoid. So that means you know, for every iteration, we still need one all reduce. Uh, so maybe uh, that's some details we can skip this one. Okay. So here, this one is for the the transpose of the matrix A multiplied by vector Y, and uh, uh, for this step we don't need uh, all reduce. Okay, the communication is just local. Okay, so uh, generally speaking, you know. So uh, if you are interested, you know, and uh, uh, we already published a paper, uh, actually two or three paper, you know, for this algorithm, you can take a look at the uh, details of the algorithm uh, from our papers. So uh, roughly speaking, the general idea is we do specific partition for the different part of the matrix, and in order to reduce communication cost. Okay. Previously, uh, if you are just divide the matrix by regular partition, even the block-based or row-based or column-based, it involves lots of global communication. And our approach, okay, so first, you know, based on the different um, format of the matrix, you know, roughly the whole matrix divided by the kernel and the damping for kernel, we have different partition, for damping we have another different partition. So in this way, and for every iteration, so uh, most of communication will be just local. Okay, certainly we still have some global or reduce, but most communication just local. So that's the general idea. So uh, our approach, okay, uh, mainly reduce uh, global communication. Uh, it's very scalable, and if we use more core, and uh, so there will be least overlap between the neighbors. Okay, so that means we will have this communication volume, the algorithm is very scalable. So here is a, a we show the load balance, uh, some optimization. So that's also you know talk about some motivation. For example, um, in the matrix we have lots of non-zero, and the non-zero is not evenly distributed. So a very straightforward idea, okay. Given the problem, you know, I think you know most people know here. You know, for the straightforward load balance approach, is you know we try to partition the row, uh, or even you know even the partition row or even the partition uh, the column. That's a very straightforward approach, but uh, that approach doesn't work very well. Uh, another uh, approach is you know we can just based on the non-zero element. We do not evenly partition based on row and column, we can partition the matrix based on the number of the non-zero element. However, for that approach, you know, there's still a problem because okay, uh, the whole matrix is not even. And so in this way, some uh, when we partition the matrix, okay, every node could have the same size of the non-zero element. But however, uh, for the vector, the vector is still very large and for the vector uh, no, it's not even distributed because you know some <coughs> node could have the, I mean, longer partition and some node could have shorter partition. So in this way, the communication will be a big problem. Okay, the communication is not uh, balanced. So here in our approach, uh, we should find a, try to find some trade-off between uh, the communication load balance and the communication load balance. Okay, if we evenly di distribute the non-zero element, okay, the computation is balanced, but the communication is not balanced. Okay, so for the first approach, and on the top of the first approach, the communication is balanced, but however, the communication is balanced, but the computation is not balanced. But anyway, so <laughs> there's some trade-off between the computation and the communication. Okay, so here we try to find you know some uh, in the middle side and. Uh, Make the computation and the communication looks, you know, both looks well. So here, that's our experiment on Kraken um, computer, supercomputer. Uh, in a Kraken computer, and uh, we try up to uh, two thousand uh, CPU cores, and uh, we test uh, mainly you know two uh, here. 
So in this experiment, this graph just show our experiments on the one of the uh, data set. Uh, that's a DC3 and the total. Um, okay, the DC3 is uh, a relatively smaller, and uh, there is a much larger one called NG, N A N G F F N A uh, G F. You know that's much larger. Okay, here we show. I mean, basically size about the matrix. That is our result. Uh, so in uh, this graph, and we test <coughs> the CPU power, you know, up to around 2000, and the blue line is uh, our uh, original version of the parallel LSQR. Uh, in that one, it's just uh, use some um, traditional partition. Okay, the parallel LSQR. That's the blue one. And the red one is a Pad C implementation. Okay, the LSQR implementation in Pad C. Uh, the green, the two green line is our the latest implementation of the scalable parallel LSQR. So here from that graph we can see you know, if we uh, increase the number of cores uh, for the Pad C initially is in a decrease, I mean the the time, that's execution time, decrease a little bit, and then it cannot scalable. And for our original implementation, that's the uh, most straightforward partition, and uh, initially also scalable, but you know, then if we, after more than maybe you know, 1,000 core, and it cannot scalable. So our, the latest approach, okay, so for the scalable uh, parallel LCR is very scalable. So, uh, but that's only for the 2,000 cores, and then we try um, an, uh, on a larger matrix with much more CPU cores. That's up to, you know, maybe around uh, 10,000, I think. Okay. So, um, in this experiment, set, we can see for the pet C. Uh, Pedacy when we reach around the, you know, the 2,000 cores and Pedacy cannot run because you know that's too uh, many cores and there's problem you know in the implementation of the Pedacy. It's not scalable. For our approach, it is still scalable up to the 10,000 cores. And uh, for the performance, and uh, here we show you uh, some of the improvement uh, in terms of the execution time, okay, just for execution time. And our approach uh, is around, you know, on the 360 cores, and uh, our approach is around 4.3 times faster than Pepsi. And uh, so if we use the 200, 400, uh, 2,400 cores, and our approach is around 10 times faster than Pepsi. That's just for execution time. And for the communication, Communication time and our approach significantly reduce communication cost uh, compared to PEC, you know. So, so it could be you know more than one hundred times faster for communication. Uh, that's experiment on blue water. On blue water, uh, we test up to the uh, okay two thousand uh, okay twenty five thousand six hundred cores. So here we show our result, you know, it's still very scalable. That's experiments on uh, the new supercomputer uh, in Wyoming it's called the Yellowstone. Uh, we, okay, we also test, you know, um, around uh, 10,000 uh, CPU cores. And uh, so uh, please note, you know, for the vertical, uh, at least the execution time, but it's not uh, propositional, and we can see, okay, here, actually our approach is very scalable and reduce the execution time a lot, uh, by the way, you know, this one is not uh, proportional, okay, and for the pet C, and we can see the pet C cannot decrease the performance, okay, if, even if we use more cores. So, um, all that, that's the, just the CPU implementation, and it's a very scalable approach. Okay. Uh, we also uh, try the GPU. Uh, we have the implementation for the GPU, and in the GPU, uh, we didn't design our own kernel. Mainly we use 
uh, NVIDIA kernel called the CU Sparks. Okay, that's an NVIDIA library. Um, in the NVIDIA library, you know, we cannot use the CU Sparks uh, directly because you know, for our approach, it contain uh, the CSR. Uh, um, if we use the original, I mean, original NVIDIA library, and it's very slow, and we change that a little bit. Okay. So here we have the different version of the GPU implementation. In the first version, we just use one copy of CSR. Okay, in the second version, we use one copy of the CSC. That's another uh, format of the sparse matrix. And uh, in the third version, we use one copy of the CSR and one copy of the CSC. So here is also, you know, we keep the two copies of the data set and uh, try to improve the performance. Okay, sacrifice some memory, but performance has been improved a lot. And for the fourth version, and it's only one copy of the CSR, but you know, we rewrite uh, uh, most of the code of the kernel. You know, we redesign the kernel. So that is the result for the GPU implementation. And uh, so in GPU, we didn't try too many uh, GPUs. You know, we we just uh, you know use up to the 16 GPU and check the performance. So. Here, that's a comparison, and uh, in this, uh, in the results for the uh, single position data, and so our the third version and the fourth version has the best performance, okay? And for the double position, and mainly, you know, it's also the third and fourth version, okay? Here we show, you know, so the GPU has been um, much faster than the CPU, okay? So the first one is the CPU, and the middle, that one is the GPU. And uh, PET C is the last one. We can see, okay, the PET C, PET C is based on the CPU, it's CPU implementation. It's also very slow. <coughs> so uh, for the weak scalability, you know, we also tested that, and we tried the CPU, uh, uh, the GPU implementation, and here we can also see uh, the GPU uh, is also uh, faster, much faster than the CPU. Okay, so that's the result for the GPU implementation. Okay. Anyway, so uh, some sounds impact, you know. So after we apply uh, our you know new LSUR to some of the real world uh, something data set, and uh, here you know we can see you know so we get much better uh, results uh, for the uh, uh, ge geology, uh, ge I mean, the, just the earthquake data set. Okay, it show better results. Anyway, so um, that's some conclusion. So, uh, by the way, you know, my research area is HPC. You know, I'm faculty in the Department of Computer Science. You know, so my job, you know, my student and I mainly focus on optimizing the code. Okay, so my collaborator, you know, he comes from the. Uh, uh, the geophysics and he applied the approach to his problem and found okay that's improved the performance a lot. Okay. So the general speaking, you know, and uh, so in our approach and uh, we do a very noble partition for the data set and uh, it's a domain specific um, approach but it works very well for the seismic data set and I hope you know uh, our approach can be you know applied to some other areas you know if your data set have the similar format and uh, you know please talk to me and uh, you know the by the way the code is available online and uh, if you want to try you can download and try the code okay so thank you